Rosner Rosner from WRSU here with Sam from the Parlor Mob. Sam, how was the performance today? It was great. We had a great time, great crowd, um, beautiful weather, good time. You couldn't ask for anything more, really. And you just played at Seeker Now today, and previously this month you played at on a rooftop concert for 92.3. How does it feel to step back into these major performances again as a band? Um, it's pretty nerve-wracking. We haven't been like playing that much. Um, so we're like kind of just getting back into the swing of things. So, um, but we're like, and we have all these new songs. So we have a new album. So it's like, but we're getting there. Like today was better than the last one, and the next one will be better than today. We'll kind of like get back into it because we're like, we had done a lot of touring over the years. So we were like, you get into that touring zone where you're like, it's like second nature. And now everything's kind of like you got to get back to that place. I guess you know. We're getting there. Is there a point on every tour where you feel like the songs just finally click and you feel like a top musical performance? There's um, points like during every like new song. Every time we play the new songs, there's moments like today I like learned something new where I was like, all right, like if I like do this there, it's better or whatever. Like so every time we play, we like learn a little something new about like how to better perform the songs. I think. So the music is constantly evolving, basically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, we're getting tighter, figuring out, like I said, little things that we could do here or there to, like, like, the songs will be, yeah, like, if you hear, if you come see us a month from now, it's going to be slightly different than today or whatever. What was your craziest tour experience? Um, craziest tour experience. I mean, we, we were asked to leave a tour once that we were on because along with the other band that we were on tour with and um, we were in Winnipeg which is in the middle of Canada and uh, that was pretty weird just like be out on tour and then it was just a bad vibe between us and the other band and uh, we were just like all right well I guess we'll just go home and we we're just in Winnipeg that was kind of weird we're not going to name any names here no no uh, no rhyming words of the, the band no question. we'll just that we'll just keep it uh, anonymous Water Under the Bridge. Yeah. You were recently featured on a playlist on Spotify with 837,000 monthly listeners called Rock and Roll. Pure Rock and Roll, actually. Were we really? Yeah, you were. Cool. With Greta Van Fleet, Cream, Led Zeppelin. If there was any band that you'd like to perform with, open for, or open, have open for you, what would it be? Um, I mean, open four, I would love on this record, I think I'd love to open for Arctic Monkeys. I think would be a really good fit um, kind of for where we're at musically. Um, open for us, I mean, we're, we have friends in town that are for sure like. I mean, like, we're doing a tour in January, we're bringing um, Deal Casino, Do you know, are you familiar with that band? Yeah. So we're bringing them um, out with us in January. Eric, who plays um, guitar in our band, also has a band called The Cold Seas. They're, like, definitely high up on the list of bands that I'd love to open for us when we go out on tour. Um, I don't know, bands like, I don't know, Arctic Monkey would be, like, a really great one, I think, uh, for us to open for. We're doing dates with this band, The Struts, you know them. We're all like really excited about that, um, as far as opening for them, yeah. Is there a soundtrack to the tour right now? Any artists that you're specifically listening to? Um, like what am I listening to at the moment? Um, I think that's like what's like new. Um, I really, really love this, uh, guy from Brooklyn called Amon Dunes, uh, Amon Dunes, Amon Dunes, uh, he just put out an album that's really good, um, I love the new Arctic Monkeys record, it's not that new anymore, it's been out like, for a while now, um, what else, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank, I really love, um, this band Wild Nothing, that I, I, I guess they've been around for a while, but I just heard of them recently, um, that kind of covers it right now. So I have a quote here from your former bass player, Anthony. Uh -huh. And so he said that satisfaction has proven very difficult to come by in an industry that, since our inception, has only grown more and more difficult to flourish in as an artist. So it's been seven years since your last 
full record. Has this proven true over the past seven years? Nah. Um, I just think it's real, like music now is like a band that's still kind of like coming up. Is It's a catch-22 um, because there's so many ways to um, get your music heard, but be, but because like you know, you and I could make a go make a record like tonight and put it on Spotify, and if it's really really great, people it could catch on. People might start listening to it. The problem is, there's everybody can do that, so it's like needle in a haystack. It's hard to find. Whereas like I guess in the before like streaming and all that stuff, you know, like you were getting like labels were signing bands and um, you were getting fed whatever like made it up to that upper echelon of bands that's who you would hear on the radio or with marketing and promotion and all that kind of stuff um, so it's really easy to get your music heard if people can find you like that needle in a haystack kind of thing you know what I mean you're producing or your producer now is Malay who's produced for Frank Ocean Sam Smith Lord has he had an influence on the direction of the band for this latest uh, upcoming album? Yes, that, absolutely. Um, he really kind of became a member of the band while we were making the uh, record. And uh, I think that um, he brought another level of sound, sound scapes and things that we had never really thought about, you know, like our work was very, like, rock and roll, you know, we love rock and roll, like, um, but, uh, we also listen to so much music that is, uh, more similar to, like, the music that we ended up making for this record, and he, we talked with him about that, and he helped us really achieve that, you know, using, uh, more, some more synthesizers and, uh, layering vocals and, uh, some of the songs have like multiple drum tracks on them and we kind of like layered it and just kind of like we went all out like no rules the other records that we had made it was like live band in a room let's do it uh let's get a good performance of us playing the song live in the room and that's amazing too but this was just we just did this differently and it was it, uh it worked out i think really great and we're all really happy with it you know does he get co-writing credits on these songs yeah he's got a. Uh, he's he helps us write uh a handful uh, of the songs, if maybe, or maybe a, a little bit of every song. Yeah, like it was so collaborative. I mean, like in the past, it was like you write, like I write the, I play, write the drum parts, the guitar, Paul plays, writes the guitar parts, Mark writes the vocals. And we like on this record, it was like, you know, hey, what's that line? What's that lyric, Mark? Hey, maybe we should change it to this. And it was like, oh, cool, good idea. Or sometimes it was like, nah, I like it the way it is, but like. Sam, we should do this on the drums. It was like we were writing our parts all together with Malay included, um, which is really interesting. Like the hearing, like, you, like some people be like, oh, like the guitar player should tell me what to play. I'm the drummer. You know what I mean? But we were very uh, open to all of that kind of stuff. So your current lineup sounds like it really kind of clicks with each other. Have you won't, you don't think there's going to be any changes in the lineup anytime soon? No, this is this is it. This is the, this is the band, <laughs> the, five, the five of us. Uh, we have we feel like it's we're really dialed in now with what we're doing, and we're bringing in uh, Gianni, our bass player, and Eric, who plays guitar and the synth. It's just like the vibe is there. Right. Yeah. On your first album and your latest EP, you have these like seven to eight minute yes esque songs that kind of really high, highlight your musical chops. Are we going to see another one of these songs on the newest upcoming album or what do you know? No, there's nothing really, there's nothing really like that on the record. Um, we are definitely going to bring some of that, kind of save that for the live um, stuff, you know. So. We have these like kind of short three and a half minute, um, more like pop format songs on the record. But when you come see us live, there could be you know a four minute intro that's a little bit more uh, akin to what we used to do on the old records. Yeah. So it's the tenth anniversary of your first album. What kind of legacy do you think it's had over the past ten years? And where do you see your band in ten years? Um. I mean, we still play songs off that record, so that to me kind of like says it all, you know what I mean? Like we have a new record coming out and we're still playing 
songs off of that album. Um, people have like told me, I don't know, like people have been like, that's a timeless album. That's a huge compliment, you know what I mean? To hear that about an album that you've made. I I think it's a really great record, but you're never, it's hard to be, um, you know, uh, uh, you can't like, you know, I don't judge my own music. I like my own music, but it's not like, I think that record's timeless, you know what I mean? Like, uh, but, um, and then, I mean, in 10 years, I, I would imagine we'll still be doing this. We've been doing it now since, uh, I mean, 2005, really, which would be the Parlor Mob became the Parlor Mob. So, I mean, 13 years now, we, we, we can do another 10. <laughs> Where can we best find all the new music and all the new updates from your band? Um, we're super active on Instagram and Twitter and uh, Facebook. Um, probably the best thing uh, listening to the music I think I am a fan of Spotify um, I just, it's where I, I, I pay for it I stream music on it I know that there's um, you know a lot of opinions on the streaming and the, the royalties to the artists and all that stuff but I mean I love paying that and being able to like you tell me about a band right now I can just go listen to them at this very moment um, and I think it's super worth it I think Spotify is the best way to to uh, get our get our music, Apple Music, Spotify, um, yeah. Sweet. Thank you so much, Sam. Cool. Thanks so much, guys.